very good morning to all on behalf of sai bombedkar birsa student association ira new delhi i cordially invite you all for the special online lecture on the occasion of uh, savitri bhopale birth anniversary she is the social reformer well known first uh, india's <coughs> teacher who fought for the welfare of the uh, drone trodden section especially the women education so based on this uh, uh, our anniversary we have chosen a topic of uh, society education identity a discourse on the arrearance i have become a tide so today we have a very uh, this is the university of agriculture i also cordially welcome all the uh, all the audience who joined uh, uh, for this session and also i also welcome all the students of the uh, iri and also the office based uh, for the welfare of the student community working at the national capital year i also welcome the office bearers of the babsa and also uh, many faculty members uh, and uh, professors are joined to this session i also welcome them uh, <clears throat> a quick uh, bio of the speaker uh, dr sshwini p assistant professor is a very well known writer in the uh, university of agriculture sciences in karnataka and she has completed uh, her uh, master from the university of uh, bengaluru uh, in english and also so phd from the reva and currently currently teaching uh, english in the college of agriculture bengaluru madam we are very, we are very much uh, delighted and also privileged to welcome you for this uh, uh, session on the Thank very you. important topic thank you ma'am and uh, we wish you take this session thank you thank you very much uh, that was a very uh, short and brief uh, introduction of mine um, once again i would like to uh, share my screen so that uh, you can see the uh, slides so i just wanted to know uh, whether this slides are visible Still no ma'am. No. Yes. Not visible. Not visible. Not visible. Not visible ma'am. Still. Now is that uh, visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, good morning, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Babsa uh, extended family. I must say, I congratulate Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Birsa Student Association of IARI uh, for organizing this program on the occasion of birth anniversary of Sabita Bai Phule. I thank uh, the president. Uh, Manu, for giving me this opportunity in this context, so I would be uh, talking about a novel of Geeta Haridharan's "I Have Become the Tide." So, the entire novel, like it is very close to me, uh, close to my heart. Uh, the thing is, I have done my PhD on this particular writer. So, this writer is very famous in Indian English literature. So, let me talk about the significance of this title. I have become the tide. So, the I have become the tide is uh, wherein uh, the title itself uh, talks about how powerful the tide uh, stands despite all the uh, you know uh, odds of winds and um, the storms. So, the significance of uh, the tide is it, it, it's about people who are struggling in this Indian society. to make their identity so this is uh, authored by uh, geeta hariharan in uh, and published in uh, 
And uh, who, the first thing is, I, I would like to give a very brief introduction about Gita Hariharan. Gita Hariharan is a very well-known, famous uh, writer in, in, in Indian English literature. She was born in Coimbatore in 1954. Later, she, uh, she was graduated from Bombay University. Later, she moved to uh, abroad for her master's. She worked there, and then she came back to India and then uh, became a full-fledged writer. And she's not only a writer, a feminist, and also, I must tell you that uh, she is a social activist. She, is, she doesn't give only the lip sympathy to the downtrodden pe so, uh, people of the society, but also she voices the atrocities and the violence which is happening on them. And she is the first woman who uh, challenged Hindu minority uh, and um, uh, guardianship act uh, as it was uh, no discriminatory against women and uh, she questioned uh, in the court of law against RBI and then uh, she won the case in fact uh, and then that made uh, to change the Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act in 1999. Then she also received Commonwealth Writers uh, Prize for her debut novel The Thousand Cases of Night. So and um, she has uh, written uh, uh, very, uh, a number of uh, novels as well as the short stories and um, she is a very uh, well-known writer wherein uh, I have done my PhD on her work and I have uh, worked on the themes like myth, society and identity. Um, well, uh, if at all uh, we see uh, the entire uh, history of uh, women in this Indian society, we could understand how far that we have traveled because we all know how women struggle to have uh, their identity in this patriarchal uh, society. In this regard, one must um, be thankful to our heroes of the society, that is Savitri Bhai Pule, one of them, uh, wherein she was the first woman uh, teacher in this uh, line. And also she uh, understood the importance of education. So she was an educationist. And very importantly, she was a social activist, as well as she uh, was... Um, you know, pioneer in the uh, Indian uh, women, uh, you know, or Indian feminist movement. And she understood the importance of education as well as uh, she also uh, knew the future is based on, see, if at all we get education, then only we can become uh, empowered. So women's education was at most needed for the construction of the society in a better better way. And now coming back to this particular novel, why I have chosen this particular novel? Because this novel talks about the social issues and uh, how uh, it, uh, how the society is been framed and how uh, these, uh, uh, you know, society, uh, wherein it is the amalgamation of all the different communities, isn't it? So society, what does it mean? It, it, has, it is a heterogeneous section and you have uh, various uh, communities, they uh, live together, right? And education, uh, education is the only panacea to all our problems. And educational institutions are very, very important to construct this society in a better form. So let me talk about what is identity. So this uh, also, this talks also, uh, you know, talks about uh, or uh, throws light on light on identity. So identity we have uh, based on uh, different. Um, you know, uh, platforms like, you know, identity is very important, knowing ourselves, what we are, what are dreams and what are our amb amb uh, you know, aspirations and how uh, best that we are striving to achieve it. But in that process of achievement, you have uh, lots of obstacles. And this identity is also based on our uh, gender identity, uh, caste identity and then religious identity, so on. So this particular novel has three narratives. So the first narrative is, um, uh, you know, it, it, it is, it, it it is like, you know, it goes past and then takes us to the present and then from present takes us to the past. So this is a intertwining section of three different narratives uh, deals with past and present. The first narrative is Chikka, son of Cattle Skinner. So Cattle Skinner, you must be knowing that, you know, which uh, community that it uh, talks about. And then the second uh, point here is uh, Professor Krishna and then three Dalit students, Asha, Ravi and Satyam, who aspires to become doctors in their um, uh, by the profession. So now uh, let me talk about uh, this particular uh, uh, you know, narrative, one of the narratives, wherein Chika, uh, son of Cattle Skinner, uh, his, uh, 
father used to be a cattle skinner in a, one particular village. Where it, 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 this is the story that takes us back three decades uh, ago and uh, 30 decades ago. I'm, I'm, um, it, it's almost a century past. Wherein um, he, um, his father was a cattle skinner by his profession and Chikka never wanted to become the same. But what actually the tradition of or the society uh, makes us to do, uh, no matter what, uh, the, the profession is not of your choice. So if, if your forefathers, your fathers are doing it, no matter what, you have to continue doing the same thing. So Chikka never wanted to become a cattle skinner and then uh, he throws all the skinning tools to, uh, into uh, his father's grave and then he starts running, running from that particular village and then uh, he, because he wanted he was craving for a new identity he never wanted to uh, have the same identity as a cattle skinner and then uh, he moves to Ananda Grama wherein he becomes a washerman and then he, he, he felt very happy looking at the river because um, and in that previous village where um, he was not allowed to uh, touch the ponds of the upper community people. And then when he uh, moved to Anandarama, which is a village, which is a casteless society, casteless uh, um, society wherein uh, encourages everybody and there is a social equality. And then he uh, falls in love with uh, a lady, Mahadevi, and then gets married to her. So that is a ki kind of, you know, that also talks about it. Uh, the intercaste marriage back then. And then uh, the second narrative, it is about Professor Krishna, who wants to, uh, to uh, who uh, involves in the research of knowing about who is the saint, Hindu saint poet Kanadeva. And um, that is about his research. And then the third uh, point that is three Dalit students, Asha, Ravi, and Satya, this is, this is about the present um, uh, you know, a contemporary uh, story in the novel. So these three aspires, uh, aspire to uh, become doctors by their profession because they never wanted to call as Dalit students. And if at all they uh, achieve something, they, they they wanted to strive very hard in, by the uh, to get that social status. So that that may change their identity. That was their hope of uh, doing, uh, taking, uh, studying so hard and then wanted to go for uh, medicine. But these three students were actually suffering uh, with, like when, when we see a lot many characters in the novel, they all they always search for their identity. So they, they were suffering by identity crisis. So what do you mean by identity crisis? According to Eric Erickson, he talks about, uh, no, if at all we are not able to understand ourselves, then we suffer from the crisis of it, so identity crisis. So you have different uh, types, like you know, identity conflict, where you are so confused about what to do, how to do, uh, exactly how to go about it, and then identity deficit, wherein uh, you are not able to decide something on, and then uh, you may fail in um, getting to know the values and the importance of uh, yourself and. Uh, identity achievement through all these obstacles, achieving your identity itself is a very, very, very challenging task. And especially in this contemporary world, it is uh, very hard for anybody to achieve their identity in spite of, you uh, know, uh, in spite of uh, facing identity crisis. So now getting back to this point, who is Hindu saint poet Kanadeva? So this is uh, a very main uh, core uh, uh, so, uh, plot line of this particular uh, novel because uh, who is Saint Poet Kannadeva? The entire novel talks about Kannadeva. So Professor uh, Krishna wanted to know the roots of this mystic Hindu poet who is Kannadeva. So he does his research, uh, taking uh, studying too hard about the palm uh, leaf scriptures, and then he gets to know that this particular Saint uh, Poet Kannadeva is none other than the son of Chikka and Mahadevi and grandson of a cattle skinner. So now uh, you may be getting an idea how exactly this uh, is leading to words. So this particular uh, saint, uh, poet, when uh, when he talks about the identity, the true identity of this particular saint poet, people of this society, uh, Indian society, well, it was not welcoming because they never wanted to uh, 
Elu, a great saint poet, to be a Dalit, right? And then uh, Professor Krishna uh, was like, you know, Hindu fundamentalist, uh, that were, uh, which is referred in the novel, were uh, totally disturbed and then they didn't want this uh, to be happen. And then uh, finally, the extremists prepared a list of, you know, hit list, wherein Krishna, Professor Krishna's name go in that and then they plan to kill him so what exactly this plot line is talking about because uh, the, any truth for that matter society is not ready to take especially the mainstream so the mainstream society doesn't allow any uh, the downtrodden uh, people to become uh, the you know pride of the society or uh, to uh, give them any of the uh, chances to be the heroes of the society because they don't want the entire uh, particular one religion to be uh, like they don't want to consider them into the mainstream that is all the main thing so and in that particular story what happens he also discovers that um, the entire um, scriptures that was written by Kannadeva was not actually written by Kannadeva but his mother wherein uh, they wanted to uh, Chikka and then Mahadevi wanted to give uh, him the education so they sent him uh, they sent him to uh, monastery wherein he turns in, uh, into a monk wherein she stays back in the same village and then learns edu uh, to read and write and then she starts uh, writing all her uh, experiences so that was a kind of salvation to her and then she uh, gets that salvation through her writing so finally uh, everybody the world gets to know that the Hindu mystic saint poet is none other than Kannappa and he belongs to, he is grand you know, son of cattle skinner. And then when the professor, uh, professor uh, Krishna's name goes to hit list, the two uh, murderers come by bike and then uh, wearing helmet and then they should, you know, they shot him dead. If this happened. So very clearly, this portrays like you know this uh, uh, the entire visual uh, uh, you know scenes takes us back to the contemporary issues of this society wherein Gauri Lankesh was uh, you know criticized and then uh, you know uh, murdered and also the other image you can see on the screen that is Kalburti. So what happened to these intellectual spirits uh, in this present India? Just because they said some truth, they were shot dead. Right? So if that is the case, then what happened to the freedom of expression? What, 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 where exactly the entire society is leading towards? When the intellectual spirits are losing their um, right, right to speak or right to op op opine on something, uh, if, then, then how else that we can construct this society in a better sense that's a big question mark so these intellectual spirits always acts as like you know watchdogs so that they get to know where exactly the government is going wrong and then they criticize it so where there is criticism always there will be some evolution or some progress in the government level or in the in the construction of the society or the system so now i leave it here and then I'm going back to the other narrative wherein three students who were, you know, aspiring to become, um, you know, doctors. So now this particular image you can see. So you can make out who this uh, person is who is carrying a Baker, uh, you know, a portrait in his hand. None other than Rohit Vimla. So he is a very well-known uh, person. And uh, you all know what did he suffer? What did he undergo? So here... Uh, these three characters were in uh, Asha, uh, Ravi, and then Satya. So these these three people, these uh, th um, three students, Dalit students, who aspires to become uh, doctors for the societal status because they wanted to change their identity from Dalit to doctors. So that at least by becoming doctors, they may uh, earn some better identity in the society because they are always considered as untouchable, they are always considered as quota students. Um, uh, whether these all the three get into medicine? No. Uh, Asha joins uh, nursing college uh, and, uh, and um, Ravi joins uh, for zoology, that is a general degree course, and Satya joins for medicine. So now what happens with Asha? Asha is a person, see the significance of the uh, 
um, title, I mean, uh, the name itself talks about like, you know, how uh, aspiring she was. Uh, she was dreaming for, uh, you know, better identity. So when she joins nursing, uh, there also this uh, uh, problem of uh, discrimination happens when she was uh, harassed to some extent. Um, and then uh, she was uh, given only the menial works like, you know, cleaning the back pan, or cleaning the toilets and washrooms just because she belongs to this particular community. This uh, In the same group, other girls would be given to clean kitchen or do bed uh, uh, and, you know, uh, um, give medicines. So, and one of the um, characters in the um, story, she says that, you know, you belong to this particular community. Serving comes by birth. So what does it mean? This particular community it has taken its birth just to serve the upper community classes of the society. So that is what the entire dialogue, uh, you know, gives the inner meaning. And then what happened to Ravi? Ravi uh, always, um, uh, you know, um, uh, was was very keen to know about the history of these Dalits. So in this particular uh, college, in his uh, degree college, general degree college, uh, wherein he uh, gets to know that there is an organization that is called as Bhima Shakti, wherein that, uh, you know, motivated and then empowered all the students who come from these downtrodden communities. So uh, uh, Professor Sintil, wherein uh, he talks about uh, Dalits and their identity and then he gets motivated through uh, Dr. Sentil. There, Sentil uh, says in uh, his speech that we have not come here uh, because of someone's kindness or we have not come here because of God. They have come here because we have right to come here. So that entire dialogue make uh, dialogue makes uh, this Ravi to become uh, more uh, strong and then uh, then he, he starts uh, uh, you know uh, feeling proud about his identity than uh, feeling uh, you know uh, embarrassed or uh, you know uh, very uh, having low self-esteem so then he becomes empowered and uh, I mean uh, through his ideas uh, and then uh, I was talking about Satya. So now this particular Satya character is uh, holds uh, Satya character holds mirror to uh, our uh, you know we can call Rohit Vimla as a hero because uh, he has uh, like uh, you know he he become an idol to many of uh, us like um, you know through his ideas through his poems we can understand what did he undergo through his um, um, psych, uh, through his uh, thoughts. So now. Uh, this uh, Satya, uh, he wanted to become a great doctor, where, uh, had uh, very good merit, and, uh, very good. and then what happened, uh, she, uh, he um, uh, you know, joins the college and then he would be studying so hard, but there also he was being humiliated, targeted by the professors. Uh, and not only a professor called as Dr. Sharma always targets him in the classroom. Though he tells the right answer, he says that, you know, he, he always belittles his answer and then tells him on his face that way, from where you people come, taking uh, the you know, seats of meritorious students. And also he says that even though he is present in the classroom, uh, Sharma uh, marks him absent twice in a week and uh, pays him uh, not, uh, by not giving him the internals. And then when he goes and asks him, he says that, oh, were you present in the classroom? I didn't get to know. Oh, uh, sir, I have answered every question, but still you have not given me the answers. He says that, oh, you know, copying also. So every uh, point, every uh, stage of uh, uh, you know, his education uh, uh, levels, it, he was uh, uh, harassed by his own professors. And that internally, uh, that in turn, re, you know, reflected on his uh, scholarship, wherein because of uh, attendance shortage, he fails in getting the scholarship. So no scholarship, so no living. So these people, these poor uh, students will, uh, you know, uh, dependent on these scholarships. So that was a very, um, a very structured plan by a professor to harass and target him. So 
when this happened uh, he becomes very uh, weak emotionally and then uh, that made him to take extreme step so what entirely these educational institutions are doing in the society educational institutions in fact take us towards enlightenment which i, I told in the beginning it's a, what is education that takes us adds knowledge to the existing knowledge and then takes us towards enlightenment uh, you know uh, help us to uh, on wisdom but here even in the educational institute if the discriminations are uh, so much into the uh, into its peak then what happens like you know how are we constructing this society that becomes a major question for all of us to think about so now uh educational uh, institutions also part of uh, this discriminations then where should these students go and it is a very existing problem uh, probably everybody has uh, faced it so uh, based on the identity just because they are uh, the students from uh, coming from that particular community that we cannot uh, treat them in such manner so one has to uh, think about it so now uh, what happened when um, this particular uh, character satya when he died right uh, the institution claim uh, that uh, he was not a meritorious student he was not a bright student probably uh, he had some personal problems hence uh, that made him to take that kind of an extreme step right so getting to know about his suicide um, satya's uh, suicide note uh, ravi and then asha uh, they they were so they become so devastated and um, you know uh, asha uh, gets to uh, asha will uh, see uh, happen to see his uh, personal blue book wherein he had written lot of poems in that and then he talks about how he suffered a lot mentally so entire world talks about mental health today but have we ever looked at these people who uh, who crave for new identity and what kind of mental trauma that they undergo nobody right and then uh, a lots of uh, you know rally happens and then um, um ravi also uh, in participates in rally and then um, he um, you know demands for the justice and uh, you all know like you know intellectual spirits intellectual people are being shorted and uh, we have not uh, got a justice yet and then a uh, lot lot of injustice which is very much evident but still we don't have proof to prove it right and um why we all we consider rohit vimla as a hero because uh, through his writings uh, he talks about how society treated him right so getting back to uh, satya's character so i was talking about blue book so these are the few um, you know um, um, points that he talks about me a doctor me write poems and songs i can hear laughter they laughter medicine they call it if this is healing i do not know it poetry they call it if this is poetry i do not know it they don't want to know me either the stuck up bastards this medicine that poetry has no place for me right so the very land we are not welcoming uh, the downtrodden people into the mainstream then what is the concept of motherland that's why uh, you know dr uh, b r ambedkar says that you know he never believed in the concept of motherland at all if at all this motherland this land would have been mother to all of these downtrodden uh, people probably that wouldn't have uh, you know treated them uh, not even equals to the animals right and also this is one of other poetries that uh, in the novel that we can see books newspapers tv movies court and classroom the streets i'm looking for missing persons i am looking for them everywhere my mother back bent humming to herself my invisible father my lost sister my open hearted brother there's no word about them no tears no anger if they never lit if they do not live still where is my story my own history right so the entire uh, the point of existence itself has become a big question to all these people who are still striving to survive in this society right so these are the two um, simple poems that uh, you know uh, you can find in the novel that i wanted to share and then talk about 
So in that sense, we can also remember how Rohit Vermula, uh, you know, offend his feelings. See that this is one of his poems, where in one day, this is uh, the poem which I have taken uh, from uh, Rohit Vermula's, uh, you know, uh, poetry. Uh, one day you will understand why I was aggressive. On that day, you will understand why I have not just served social interests. One day, you will get to know why I apologized. On that day, you will understand there are trans beyond the fence. One day, you will find me in the history, in the bad light, in the yellow pages, and you will wish I was wise. But at the night of that day, you will remember me, feel me, and you will breathe out a smile. And on that day, I will reserve. Resurrect. So he talks about his identity, what did he undergo, what made him to take that kind of extreme step, how did he become prey to this in committing uh, in, you know, uh, suicide. So when we talk about all these things, it was not a suicide, but we can say it is a murder indirectly. So who has murdered, uh, murdered him? So it is the system, the system, the very existing system, you know, pushed him to take such kind of extreme step. So what happened? The system failed, the society failed. So then one, we, we all have to think. So when we take back uh, to uh, the reference of Bhima Shakti, so as uh, Ambedkar said, educate, agitate, and organize. So organizations are very, very important in today's platform to be vocal about what we, uh, what we are undergoing, the unjust, right? So we have to uh, be the voice of these unjust and seek justice. So unless you don't ask, they don't give you. So it is our right to go and question if something goes wrong in the society. Right? In that way, I should be thankful for this particular organization also to give for giving me this opportunity. If this particular organization wasn't there, probably I wouldn't have uh, been sitting here and then talking, being vocal about all these contemporary issues which is happening. Right, and then um, as in the you know beginning itself, I had uh, uh, mentioned that uh, this particular. Uh, a novel is very close to my heart because whenever I see there is a word called identification. So when we read these uh, characters, we identify ourselves. So that, you know, in the characters. So in that way, this particular novel is very close to my heart. So that inspired me. So that one line of uh, Satya's uh, poem inspired me to write my own poem. So when uh, I have written a few uh, things, uh, my history. So I, I just uh, want to read that for you all. So poetry, poverty is ever locked chamber. Grandpa was undoubtedly a bonded labor. Worked hard and hard and done. Empowerment through though earned. Whole night rubbing in vigorous Coil from husks of coconuts at faith, selling all somehow, written home with a tiny man, tiny money and a mango. Family of ten, small hut of hatch, count stars at night through patch. Rainy season is difficult to be met, leaking areas with clay pot and plate. Robust grandma went toy fields, stuck her tone sari at works, clutching me, singing folk songs for her own of her own, land she worked on was never her own. Dad's MA degree wasn't easy as rest, must carry dry wood, green twigs from the forest. Education in utter poverty and ignorance, challenge, great challenge of one's existence. Transition from one mango to one quintal, yet no social equality at all. Improved economic condition is contra, with social distancing of Hindu Rashtra. Where is my story, my history? This is my story and history of misery. Though professor still Dalit and untouchable, will the casteless society be imaginable? So this is a very big question of where we stand today. The entire novel, as I told, 
it takes us to the past, right? A century uh, back and then again to the present. So back then we were struggling for our identity and today also we are doing the same thing. So in which direction did the society take us towards, towards progressive or towards deconstructing the entire concept of identity, right? So in that regard, I always tell like every uh, person from the downtrodden community that existence of ones, um, I mean, existence of these people in the society is very challenging. It does, if, if, every day you have to uh, see a lot of challenges in our daily lives. That is like, you know, uh, the entire story, the entire, to summarize that, I could say that every day we have a lot of challenges. For example, we strive hard to survive. And then um, in educational institutions, you have institutional discrimination. There you have to uh, strive hard. And then in employment, it is again a big challenge. Everybody talks about reservation though not understanding the importance of it because they, they forget that, uh, you know, the untouchability is there, right? But it is so evident, but still it is invisible for the people who deliberately want to just not to focus on it. And in that sense, uh, the survival, uh, the question of survival itself is very challenging and 80% of um, Dalit women have, uh, they don't serve, uh, they don't uh, question or they don't uh, think about gender equality, but the, 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 they strive hard for the basic thing that is to get, that is to, uh, you know, uh, just to survive in this patriarchal society, which is also a caste-based one. So in that, uh, every way you have discrimination, every way that we have limitations, but the thing is with in that limitations, with all those limitations, how are we making our means? How are we achieving is very, very important. So in that sense, everybody uh, has to strive very hard. And it is not only one person's achievement that we should always focus on. That is not only, not, we should not become self-centered, but also we should uh, you know, go together through organization. So we, sh we have to construct this organization very strong enough and also involve in intellectual talks and discussions. And we should contribute uh, for the betterment of our society. So in that sense, I must say, because I'm a feminist, so I, I would be concentrating on uh, women education also. So where there is education, there will be empowerment. So empowerment will always make us very strong. So yes, uh, uh, women, yes, you have a lot of limitations, but still, Yes, go and grab all your opportunities and achieve something and you can do it. If I, uh, we, I, and other people can do it. Yes, we all can do it together. And with that, I would like to uh, end the session. Thank you all. Jai Bhim. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, very much. Uh, actually, you have <clears throat> uh, integrated the the the, uh, the characteristics of the you know novel with the contemporary world. So it gives a, a more meaningful and insightful lecture. Uh, what our constitution say of uh, article 19 and 21 like uh, you know right life so that has been integrated today's lecture it is a wonderful uh, session ma'am uh, bob will be very grateful to you uh, for a uh, uh, inside for lecture and also so especially 
uh, you have integrated the uh, with OMLA and integrated to lead in our own ID in the commercial way. We lead. So now the session is joined uh, our own professor, Dr. B. N. Satyanarayan, uh, Dr. Naresh, and uh, many professor also joined. Please uh, uh, contribute and speak uh, on this uh, occasion also. I hope the session uh, will, uh, will answer also. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, the session is open for QA. Uh, so any uh, discussion? Uh, so any question? Uh, you can ask me. I'll try to answer. Please, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, uh, I think you have to uh, on your uh, mic, sir. Uh, not able to hear you. Probably you would be speaking, I guess. Yes, sir. Yes. I am audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yashaswani. Thank you, sir. For an extraordinary uh, talk, and especially on identity. And uh, you have created an identity by yourself, by your actions as a professor, and by your reactions through poetry, and by your uh, a kind of grit in trying to get into people's heart by talking to them. Thank you, by sir. By expressing your thoughts. And I would only wish all those people who have come there for the meeting only have to imbibe the quality of expressing themselves at any cost. At any cost. You may be whatever you are. Maybe you are a, a rickshaw puller or a driver. Maybe you are a professor. Or maybe you are a person who is... Uh, uh, you know, a seller on the street, you can create an identity by expressing yourself and trying to say, uh, you know, I don't have any fear and trying to tell yourself that I am, I am, I am this, I am this person and this country is mine and I have a right like anybody else and stand up for it. And all the education which uh, uh, we are getting, and maybe, maybe not as good as anybody other would, others would get, as Dr. Ambedkar put it, you have to become what you are. You have to stand up for your right. If you don't, nobody can help you. So do not wait for a messiah, as Ambedkar said. You are a messiah yourself. So thank you. And I was looking forward to your talk. And because we haven't spoken for more than two two months, yes, sir. and I know that you're going to, I, I know that you're going to be rocking, and I wish you give so many thoughts. Thank you sir. have that uh, fire in you to be talking, but uh, when we meet next time, I would give some tips on organizing much better. You could do much 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 better. Thank you. You sir. have something in you which you have to be throwing out for your system. You have to become much more open. And I give you an advice that because I am that, be more creative in whatever you want to talk. Okay. Talking is also talking is also a drama, a theater. Yes, sir. Don't forget it. Thank you, sir. And thank you so much. Thank you for the organizers. And uh, it, was, it was fun for me to have uh, interacted with you. And uh, all the best for everybody. So probably I would try to meet Vishesh me on Monday. Thank you, sir. Sit and have a, sit and have a coffee. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ma'am. Myself, yes. Dr. G. K. Dinesh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Myself, Dr. G. K. Dinesh. I have completed my PhD from Indian Agriculture Research Institute. Hello, sir. And I am one of the founding member and former general secretary of BAPSA. That's great, sir. I would like to congratulate and uh, thanks for giving this uh, wonderful lecture. And uh, it was like, a, uh, I hope not to many of the 
beginner level people so it was really wonderful and uh, really thank good you fun. so much sir thank you and i would like to give one appeal yes, ma'am like uh, we are continuously using the word like uh, upper caste upper yes, caste sir. and lower caste also yeah. so i think we should avoid it's time to avoid that word yeah is it use as forward caste okay or down trodden people instead of uh, upper caste yeah. and uh, lower caste yeah yeah that that's because, great that's uh, a that's a great have, suggestion from your end uh yeah, that th definitely I, i i welcome that thank you very much yeah ma'am yeah. if you are using that upper caste word we are psychologically thinking that uh, we are lower. they are the only upper yeah. like that it is coming yeah. and uh, we are actually avarnas we are not in any varna system yeah so exactly. we are proud in that we should be proud in that yes exactly yeah so uh, thank you just in that in that case you have to yes, probably sir. uh oh, whatever he was right so you have you, yes, you could yes, probably right, say right. yeah you, you you could probably say the so called yeah you use the prefix for the so called upper caste a so called yes, yes. lower caste that would add yeah. much meaning than a forward yes, caste exactly. again they are not forward yes. just because they have gone ahead and yes. mentally <laughs> they may not be forward okay it's the yeah. money power it is the society yeah. which puts them on a pedestal the society you know in your own uh, 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 a novel which you are referring uh, the professor puts the student down even though he was much brighter than others yes sir. so in that way you have to be called the so called professor etc yeah. etc so that has to be added that yes, shows sir. you have a disdain for those kind of people so yes, that uh, makes your talk much more uh, you know enjoyable by ordinary common people around exactly. thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to convey my thanks to Babsa for organizing this wonderful lecture. Thank you, Babsa committee members. Thank you. Uh, Chaitanya has raised her hand. Like uh, I think she has a question. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, the, the the lecture was very wonderful. Thank you, Chaitanya. Very informative also. Thank you so much. And I request you to give some inputs regarding uh, various books which you can refer other than this one which you quoted today. Okay. So I I I I suggest you people to please read Geeta Haridharan novels because uh, she is uh, she doesn't all she 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 not only gives. So the lip sympathy towards these downtrodden people, but also she is actively participating as a social activist. Wherein, in uh, you know, uh, when you when you read her uh, set of novels, you know she uh, she she put uh, you know she touches the theme like. very very uh, very strong uh, to talk about the symbol in this particular novel itself. See, uh, Chika never wanted to uh, you know beat the drums, right? he he always uh, he he disliked it but end of the novel like you know that has happened long ago like in the past and in the end of the novel the present uh, situation also i forgot to make this point ravi holds the drum back you know beating so hard and you know in the rally to ask to seek the justice right so her uh, the way that she brings up the symbols also very very uh, powerful and uh, ravi's uh, you know beating drum it's like you know uh, his uh, beating uh, hard beats can be compared to and uh, you can read uh, times of siege and uh, fugitive histories fugitive 